Hello? Hi. Hi, I'm Thomas Decker. John Connor from Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Um, how are you? I'm here to answer any questions, here to... I'm at your whim, so go for it. Okay. We got some questions. We have some questions right here, actually. Okay. So, <clears throat> I was asked, what is a favorite filming moment from the show? Uh, it was actually in the very first episode, in the very first scene, which was the very first thing that we shot, uh, I was handcuffed in the back of a cop car, and Lena Headey, playing my mother, Sarah Connor, she was supposed to pull me out of the car after she broke me out during this huge shootout situation. And they had said to Lena, we barely knew each other, we'd known each other about four days at this point, and they said to Lena very specifically, you know, he can't move, he has no control over himself, he can't move his hands, so make sure that you take care of him. Well, <clears throat> there was a pile of gravel next to the cop car, and she pulls me out of the car and completely lets me go, and I go face down in this pile of gravel, and she drags me all the way back. So my entire face is covered now, it, it, bleeding, gashes, it was horrible. And they actually had to computer remove in post the cuts and scratches all over my face for the pilot. And I just remember, you know, everybody was all worried about me and was like, oh, I'm so sorry, you, you know, it must be in so much pain. And I was like, first day on Terminator and I am completely fucked up. And that made me happy. I was like, yeah, damn right, this is how it should be. And then I got shot in the back with shrapnel the next day and had to have that removed and sewn up. So yeah, uh, just the pilot right away. But nothing was as traumatic as being naked in winter of New Mexico next to Summer Glau and Lena Headey. That was way worse. Um, because shrinkage happens in those temperatures. Okay, moving on. What do we have here? Okay. Hi. Hello. Well, that's just more kind of a, of, of a compliment. I, can, I, can't, I can't answer that. That's just more of a... Okay. Thomas. Hi. How are you? from Argentina. Hi. Sorry. I'm still learning which place to look. Uh, why they terminated the show? Well, <clears throat> it was probably because of my massive ego. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think it was a myriad of reasons. Uh, we were at that time like the biggest budget show <laughs> on television. So that was tricky and Fox was creating a lot of new sci-fi programming. We kind of got moved to a difficult night in our second season. We also were dealing with the writer's strike, which for those of you who don't know, is when all the writers uh, in the industry said, we're not writing anymore. So we had to stop at episode seven of the first season. Um, so yeah, there were a lot of factors, but I, I can tell you that we were all very, um, hopeful that we would get a third season and very sad when we didn't so but people still care so you know it's nice okay moving on uh next question can we possibly yeah, read the question out loud. okay <clears throat> sorry can we possibly bring it back are you guys still up for it you lena and summer um we'd be up for it yeah, there was talk about it for a while that we would do um, a kind of mini-series maybe, like four episodes, four two-hour episodes that really closed out the whole season, or closed out the whole show, rather. And that was really talked about, but the Terminator brand is very expensive. So uh, it, 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 it was in talks for about a year, and then it kind of went away, sadly. But I do know that me, Lena, Summer... Um, Brian, Richard, Shirley, we would all be willing to come back um, because we have, a, we have a great love for it, hence why I'm sitting here. So, Okay, next question. <laughs> Jason asks, okay, let's bring it back. Something is still better than nothing. Well, I just answered that. That's a, that's a statement, Jason. That's not a question. Um, okay, uh, 
yes, baby. Wow, there's a lot of it's there's a lot coming in right now, so you have to bear with me. Um, okay. Uh, what? What do you think would have happened? What? No. How do I go back? That was a good question. Uh, what did it sound like? I, I, was it asking? I think it was asking. What do you think would have happened in the next season? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I thought. How would the Yes, okay, so the next season, Josh Friedman, the show creator, was very, very touchy about uh, letting me know where it would go, but I do know that the show was going to be split between me, John, in the future, and Sarah in the past, and sort of seeing how that those two kind of worlds were going to, I don't know, clash. And also, there was going to be backstory for, say, Savannah Weaver, Shirley Manson's daughter, that she was going to be a freedom fighter, that, she, that there was my relationship with uh, Summer as Allison, the human being, and Summer as Cameron, the Terminator, once her chip was reimplanted. So I know that the majority of the third season was going to focus on the future storyline. And sort of the play was how does Sarah's present storyline wrap in to the future. So I know that there, that would have been really, really fun. The more I talk about it, I'm just sad that we didn't get to do it. But okay, there, that's the most I can answer because Josh Friedman won't tell me anything really. He's very secretive. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, um, what are your upcoming projects? Um, well, I wrote and directed a film. Uh, a year ago that came out in October, if you haven't seen it, it's called Jack Goes Home. So it's Rory Culkin, Lynn Shea, Britt Robertson, uh, Nikki Reed, um, Louis Hunter. It's, it's, a, it's a very dark, weird film. If you haven't seen it, I would strongly beg you, actually, to watch it. Um, so I did that and uh, I'm writing a few new projects, uh, one of them being a pilot for a show that I would write and act in, but not direct, because I can't act and direct at the same time. It's too hard, I don't know how people do it. Um, and of course, you know, trying to do my own reboot of uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles. So there's your answer. Okay, next question. Um, okay, Jason again. Okay, cool, I will, oh, thank you. That again, not a question, a statement. Um, this is good. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hello from the UK. Hi, UK. Hi, I'm dual citizen. US, UK. There you go. Um, oh, anything else coming in? Yes, we got this right here. Oh, the circled one. The circled one. Right here. Hi, Thomas. Oh, <clears throat> one more album. Um, hi. Uh, I just had a question about when will my new album be released by Sarah L. Uh, I, I'm not sure at this point. Um, I hope you enjoyed Equals Zero by my band pseudonym Zero Times Zero that came out a bit ago. I have a new one <clears throat> called Love and Razor Blades. It's a 13-track record that took a long time and was kind of produced similarly by all my weird eccentric friends and all of us kind of hanging out in my little home studio and experimenting. It's good. It's a little bit uh, tougher, uh, meaning it's a little bit more hard than the last album, but hopefully it will be released by the end of the year. That would be nice. And then we'd really like to do some shows again because we haven't done any live shows in quite a while. When you make a movie, it you know takes like two years of your life and that's all you do. So. That's kind of why I've been uh, gone from the music and, and acting scene. There's a question from Danielle. Okay, from Danielle. <clears throat> huh, what has been my favorite project to work on? Uh, Danielle, it's a tough question to answer because uh, I sort of feel like my career has been in two parts, one as a child and one as an adult. Um, so, and I assume you mean project, you mean acting. So with acting, um, my favorite project as a kid was this movie I did called Village of the Damned for John Carpenter. I was six years old and it was uh, a very 
I don't know, educational. It was the first time that I knew even as a little boy that this is what I wanted to do and this is what I was supposed to do. So that project really has a, like a very strong resonance in me. But honestly, as an adult, honestly, and I swear to God, I'm not bullshitting you. Uh, I'm not saying it just because I'm here for this talk. It would be Terminator. I mean, it really was, it wasn't only the first time I felt, I was barely 19 when I got the show. So I was still very young. But it was the first time that I felt I could really flex my muscles as an adult, or at least what I thought I was as an adult. And also Lena Headey, who played Sarah, she was the first person who kind of told me that it was okay to have friends. And I mean that sincerely. I'd been very, very, very quiet, lonely um, introvert growing up, believe it or not, because now I'm loud and obnoxious. Um, but Lena was, was sort of the first person to drag me out of my shell and getting to spend two years playing this strange dynamic of mother and son and sharing this very personal, um, loving relationship. I would say Terminator was definitely the, the best project of my life so far. Getting a new question now. From Andrea. <clears throat> Which tattoo is your favorite? Oh my good gracious. Um, uh, I would have to say, can I show it? Sure. Okay. Hold on. Not going anywhere. Well, where is it? It's on my arm. Okay. <laughs> not, not, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not like whipping out my ass or anything. Okay. To answer your question, it would be this, which says, well, son, we can always ask. And why is that my favorite? It's because, um, and nobody knows this, I've never talked about it before. When I was a little boy, my dad, um, <clears throat> who passed away a few years ago, uh, he would drive us around and he would always get lost because he, he was an absent-minded artist, so he'd always get lost. And, uh, and we would pull over for directions and he wouldn't listen and I wouldn't listen. He'd ask me if I listened, I'd say no, and then he'd say, well, son, we can always ask. So after he passed away, I got that tattoo as, uh, I don't know, it was just a, a sentence that stood out for me. So there you go. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, ooh. Oh, best John Connor. Hugs from Argentina. Thank you. Thank you. I thought I was pretty good, too. I mean, you know. Oh, anyway. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Wait. Uh, favorite episode. Favorite episode. Okay. Uh, hmm. Brianna. Uh, favorite episode. My favorite episode would be from the first season, actually, called The Demon Hand. Because it's where, it's uh, the one where Summer got to do ballet at the end. And I don't know. Not only was she so graceful and beautiful and talented and wonderful in it, but it also really, um, it you know, in the first season we had those kind of closing narration monologues of every episode, and uh, from Sarah, and that episode really seemed to solidify what the show was about: this sort of fighting for humanity in the face of technology, but kind of asking why. What's the point? I don't know. So yes, that would be my favorite episode. Okay. I keep getting a lot of best John Connor ever comments, <laughs> and I must admit, it, it makes me happy. Um, number 13. Number 13. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, 13? Oh, okay. What did you think about Derek? Okay. So Marvin T. asks, what did you think about Derek's quick death in the episode Adam Raised a Cane? Well, I can tell you, um, it was, the fans really lost their shit at the time. They were not happy about it. Now we knew, and Josh knew, the creator and showrunner, knew that Derek would be back in, you know, the next episode. In the sense of that he was kind of, you know, that now we were seeing the future version. However, it wasn't the same Derek, because this Derek didn't know me, didn't know the backstory didn't know anything. <clears throat> so 
Uh, Brian was fine with it. We were fine with it because we knew he'd be back. But the fans, I remember, I think probably out of all the moments in the whole run of the show, that was really the one where everybody really got upset. Which I don't know if that helped or hurt us because it was our last but one episode and then sadly the show did not return. But uh, we were all happy that, that we knew that Derek would come back. And I think it was, Josh Friedman spoke about it and he said, you know what, this is a show about war. And in war, death is not given a dramatic exit. So his whole point was that a beloved character, a lead character, could just be, I mean, literally in the head, close to us. But I don't know how you felt about it. I'd like to know. But um, I think it was pretty brave, pretty cool, looking back, frankly. To lighten things up, number 15. To lighten things up. <laughs> With, like, the darkest show in the world. The very bottom. The very bottom. Okay. All right, I was just asked, what is my go-to karaoke song by Laura E? Um, I have two, believe it or not. If I'm feeling, uh, you know, dramatic, a little rock heavy, I sing uh, What's Up by Four Non Blondes. I don't know if anybody's ever heard that song. It was a big hit in the 90s, all right? And then uh, when I want to make people laugh, I sing It's Oh So Quiet by Bjork. Because I just get to scream and whisper and like prance around and I kind of like try and behave like her from Dancer in the Dark and it makes people laugh sometimes. Um, so yeah, those would be my, those would be my go-to karaoke songs. Um, God, I wish I, could ask, I wish I could ask these people back what like their go-to karaoke song is, but I can't. Yeah, you can. Again? And they can list it. Oh, all right. So what is your go-to karaoke song? Perfect. I would like to know. Heavy Blend. Uh, <clears throat> oh, they're coming in. Play any songs? Oops. Uh, oh, okay. You give me questions because there's so many. I, I number can't. three. Okay, number three. All right. <clears throat> Have I seen the other two movies? So the Terminator movies. Um, okay, Christine C. Uh, yes, of course. I actually saw T2 before the first Terminator film. And I think I was probably about seven or eight, I think. And I, I didn't really know what the fuck was going on, but I was really into it. And I remember being obsessed with the liquid Terminator with Robert Patrick, which made me very happy when Shirley Manson, also the lead singer of a band that I grew up with at that same age was now going to play the Liquid Terminator in our show and it was sort of like a big mind explosion of awesomeness. Um, so yeah, I saw the second one and then a couple years later I saw the first one. And I actually, I don't know which one I prefer, to be honest. I think they're both really fantastic films. I never saw the third, which I haven't heard very good things about, but that's not my place to say. And I never saw the Christian Bale one because it came out when we were doing the show and it pissed us off. Because we felt it was a bit of a threat. You know, you have a movie where Judgment Day has happened and we're trying to stop Judgment Day. So it was a bit frustrating for all of the cast and producers. Second one. Okay, second one. Ah, uh, <clears throat> well, Louise M. I, as I said earlier, I'm a dual citizen of the UK and the US. I'm always there. All my family lives in Wales. So yes, I will be back soon. I don't know if I'll be there doing conventions or just kind of doing whatever. But yes, I, I, I love the UK. I really, really do. It kind of, it always feels like my uh, spiritual homeland. So, okay. Two minutes, okay. You me right there. <sighs> Wait, what? Romy? Read the question. Oh, do, I, I, I am, but I'm saying, Romy, th thank you for being a big inspiration. I even got a tattoo with one of your songs. What song? What? Oh my God, that's so awesome. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm very curious to know which song it was. Um, and I'm sure it's beautiful, just like you. 
Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> no. um, okay, got it. So the last question was, what was your relationship like with the cast? It was the best. We honestly bonded. We were family, and we still are. We're still all in touch. We're still all very close. Um, everyone but me has now made beautiful babies and have lovely children and a wonderful life. And we all reflect on the show very, very strongly and with much love and pride. So what you guys should know is that it's now streaming on Go90.com and the mobile app, Go90, for free, by the way. After all that goddamn work we did, now you get to watch it for free. It's kind of like TV in the old days. But yeah, Go90.com, streaming on the mobile app. Please come back to Sarah Connor Chronicles. We, we still love it. We're very proud of it. Thanks.